greetings to our panelists uh, as well as to all our guests online. Uh, again, my name is Hanna Kosova, and my task today will be to guide you through this one hour of very interesting information about actually how to connect uh, different, sometimes very different groups of people from uh, the academia as well as from companies. Uh, we will have uh, two uh, panelists uh, who kindly agreed to share their experience uh, from Portugal and Germany. It will be uh, Ms. Katyushka Cruz uh, from uh, Portuguese Innovation Agency talking about their case, how they are trying to connect uh, mostly scientific teams with business. And uh, we will also have a speech from Dr. von Bielow from German Chamber of Skilled Crafts, which sounds very interesting uh, being a non-governmental organization agency uh, joining small and medium enterprises uh, who also would like to reach out towards uh, splendid academic ideas and we will see that this process it's not always so easy. I noticed that uh, one of the hashtags uh, for this event, the full week of uh, innovation and valorization is uh, exactly the word valorization. I believe this is the perspective mostly from uh, research and academic institutions, how to valorize uh, their ideas, how to make them useful. But uh, we must not forget that on the other side, there is uh, the final client, which is the society as well as uh, the businesses, the companies who would like to somehow use the ideas, put them into practice. Uh, so we will be talking, I believe, a lot also about social impact and uh, above all about connecting people, connecting the dots uh, as uh, the title of this session says. And sometimes in order to be able to do this, uh, we need some very professional, very, very skilled people in between as mediators uh, as translators, basically, how to uh, make both sides, I wouldn't like to say both sides of the barrier, but both different uh, tribes, uh, academics and businessmen, and sometimes public institutions as well, uh, to talk the same language and to connect. And uh, once we put everyone into one melting point, we can get some splendid new innovative ideas, which can hopefully make all our lives better. So I will stop talking now and I will pass word on to Katyushka Cruz from Portuguese Innovation Agency with her presentation. If everything is technically ready, uh, for any questions you might have uh, throughout the session, please use Slido. Uh, I believe you've got the, all the details, how to connect uh, and pass on the questions through this channel. We will deal with them at the end of this session. So, Katyushka, the floor is yours now. Thank you, Hattie. Good morning. <laughs> Thank you, Hannah, for your words. And let me introduce you to I'm um, next, please. Let me see if it's working. Yes, it is. So ANI, the Portuguese National Innovation Agency, aims to develop actions to support innovation in Portugal, acting as a collaborative innovation facilitator, contributing to the consolidation of the national innovation system strengthening the competitiveness of the national economy, economy and global markets. In particular, it remit includes stimulating private investment in R&D, promoting partnerships between research and knowledge producers and industry. This is all aimed at promoting their skills and competences to use innovation as the engine of economic and social growth. Next. So the national innovation system strongly interacts with the international context, mainly, of course, uh, EU space and policy. 
The system is rich with several players related with each other. Aim, and it aims to promote the connection between knowledge production and knowledge application. With collaborative knowledge transfer networks playing a key role in this ecosystem, precisely as intermediaries. Next. And next. Among these actors, Ani has been working to reinforce um, in concrete the technological interface centers, promoting their R&D and innovative activities, enhancing the link between companies and innovation system entities, facilitating their access to highly qualified human resources and to knowledge. And collaborative laboratories, on the other hand, which main objective is to create highly qualified employment in Portugal, have the implementation of long-term research and innovation agendas. And a knowledge transfer and valorization network that is based on the experience and the work developed by, by the academic technology transfer offices along these years. And it's about training actions for its professionals to promote knowledge valorization and networking of all of the entities involved in innovation processes. Next. And knowledge transfer network aims to provide an effective and attractive, attractive interface between higher ed education institutions and companies that are seeking technology support. Also nurture good knowledge transfer offices practice, support training, toolkits, and experience sharing. Improving measurement also of technology transfer and knowledge valorization results and impact and promoting internationalization of researchers, companies, and R&D activities. Next. And these academic knowledge transfer and valorization offices, uh, since 2001, uh, have been um, several innovation public policies uh, established to create these offices in Portugal at higher education institutions to boost technology selling and its economic value creation out of knowledge through awareness and information regarding the legal status of IP rights, creating IP rights support office financed all inclusively by the IP National Institute in Portugal, INPI, a key partner for the training of KTO staff and also provide an environment of academy industry cooperation, technology transfer, and knowledge sharing in joint projects. Higher education institutions, TTOs, or KDOs, better said, have different organizational models, and in some cases, lack of autonomy. Mainly owned by higher education institutions, KDO have a key role as they serve as the first contact point for researchers with industry. And it is important to be able to speak the language of business and use it to connect to knowledge producers as well as other partners. And the funding of TTOs, of KTOs, and the culture regarding knowledge valorization for the higher education institution that owns the KTO are also issues to be tackled for the success of these offices. In 2021, and you can please show the next slide, any map the network of entities of knowledge transfer and valorization linked specifically to higher education institutions. And Portugal has today 31 active KTOs distributed along the country with a cross sectoral or sectorial approach. And their main activities uh, concern uh, mainly upstream activities such as information and on IP rights and entrepreneurship, training projects and applications for fundings, scouting of new IP and technologies, NDA agreements, patent applications, licensing agreements, and support to startup and spin-off creation of it. Distinctively, but as expected, business creation financing activities and support, namely the provision and management of seed funds or POC funds, are not assured by these entities. Many of these offices, when asked, and we ask them, the last survey that we have already, uh, information gather concerns 2017 and 2018 data. When asked, they indicate that they have some focus of degree uh, or degree of sectoral or thematic specialization. And some of the main areas uh, are 
health and life sciences, ICT, software and digital media, biotechnology also, and agriculture and agro industry. Next, please. Now some data about this KDO staff. Um, they are relatively small size. They have small teams on average for you to have a, a figure uh, and in full-time equivalent, the inquired organizations in 2018 employed 4.8 collaborators. Uh, but the staff is highly has highly um, high levels of formal education. So we have almost 50 50 percent with a master's or PhD, and there is high representation of the disciplines of engineering and natural sciences. In recent years, uh, several initiatives have been have been highlighted also by um, by the Portuguese government and reinforced technology transfer and knowledge valorization teams such as the support for hiring highly qualified human resources by these infrastructures. Next. Also still about the KTO professionals, 60% of them uh, say that they have some industry experience. This is particularly important for the, the, the speak of the same language as industry. Next, please. Now some data about patents. These um, knowledge transfer offices and higher education institutions have a key role concerning um, this IP rights um, theme. Some results concerning patent submissions. In 2018, 28 KTOs that answered our survey were responsible for 437 priority fillings, and this number has been increasing over the years. So this is very significant when compared, uh, for instance, with other uh, intermediaries such as interface centers that have less priority fillings uh, fulfilled. The number of patent applications uh, increasing is, um, for our happiness, demonstrating a greater orientation for knowledge polarization. And the domain where this um, Patents uh, where there's a greater uh, greater number of patent submissions is health and biomedicine. Next, please. KTOs are responsible uh, for this vast majority of the patent granted, and uh, that number has been um, increasing, as you can see, from 2017 to 2018, and in the following years, we believe. And um, in 2018, next, please. The 28 KTOs had over 1,500 active patents to manage. And this is an issue because it, uh, to accomplish this, it's crucial to have uh, skilled, a skilled team, so the right and sufficient staff, the right capabilities to evaluate each patent, each technology, and also, of course, the funding to keep them. The economic um, results uh, arise, uh, arising from the intellectual property rights are indeed residual. Royalties are generally not distributed to KTOs. And the creation of academic spin-offs is not an usual practice too. Also, 28% um, 20, uh, of this creation has been in responsibility of the, these KTOs. Next, please. Very recently, Annie uh, also created an innovation portal. That is a platform that brings together in one place all the information relevant to the national innovation system, aggregating content that was dispersed across various digital platforms, entities, and programs. Next. And this portal has information about the entities of the national innovation system, information about researchers, and we can search researchers specific skills, find entities that work with specific technologies, also an area for supply and demand of technologies and businesses, find partners for R&D projects, among many other functionalities. And next, we can see some facts and figures. We have more than 1,200 entities in the portal right now, and 4,557 um, offers uh, and seekings of technology also. And uh, the, the public researchers uh, in the platforms are uh, already reaching the 
50, 100, um, it's a quite good number. Next, please, to finish. So, in 2020, Portugal, previously a moderate innovator, joins finally the group of strong innovators. For the future, the vision is to work closely with these national innovation system players, connecting the dots between science and economy with a policy mix of tools, endorsing open innovation dynamics also, sharing knowledge and disseminating a culture of knowledge valorization. Next. And finish. Thank you very much. I was quite fast, I believe. <laughs> I'm here to answer all your questions in the end. Thank you. Perfect, Katushka. Thank you very much for introducing us to the Portuguese landscape uh, from uh, mostly the academic perspective, I would say. But uh, I noted that uh, you described several times uh, the need to speak the same language, uh, to have uh, people in uh, the academic uh, knowledge and technology transfer offices knowing how to reach out to businesses. Uh, I appreciate your innovation portal, and I believe it will bear fruits to your uh, universities and other uh, scientific institutions to get uh, the right partners uh, as soon as possible. Uh, so I believe there might be some more questions from the audience via Slido. Uh, you see the manual how to how to reach Slido, how to uh, send your questions. So if you've got any, please do so uh, during the presentations and we will get to these at the very end. So, Katushka, thank you again. And we will now uh, jump on a plane and move quickly to Germany to the presentation of Dr. von Bilo from Munich, uh, from the Chamber of Skilled Crafts. And I'm looking forward to description how actually you managed to get innovative people from SMEs, small companies together with hopefully some innovative uh, ideas coming from the academic and university environment. So Dr. Von Bilo, the floor is yours. Yeah. Thank you very much for your introduction. My name is Von Bilo. I'm the head of the Department of Innovation and Technology of the Chamber of Skilled Crafts. Next one, please. Next slide. Okay, and I will now uh, show you what we can do for our companies. We will present about 80,000 small companies coming from the craft sector, and we help them using new technologies and to get in touch with science so they can well, develop new products by themselves, offer them, and well, in other words, we help them to become innovative. Uh, one word about innovations as a saying that innovation is the opposite of science, Science is said to uh, make knowledge out of money, and uh, innovation will again make money out of knowledge. So this is some kind of knowledge valorization, uh, and the hard part of the process is the right uh, part, the innovation part. You can't teach a real uh, to be uh, innovative, uh, but you can help your companies to get in touch with science and to get in touch with partners which might be partners for future projects. And we have now well, created some kind of new networking events to do that uh, in a practical sense. Next slide, please. Um, I will present to you three of these new networking formats we have introduced at uh, our chamber. The first one we call Crafts Meet Science. Next one, please. We have made an uh, uh, inquiry in Paul uh, some years ago, we asked about 7,000 of our companies if they would be interested to get in touch with an university or a research institute, and uh, which would be uh, their favorite topic. Uh, yeah, about 500 answers said, well, I'm very interested to get in touch with one of these institutes. Um, and they gave us uh, their interest. You can see it here below. Some of them said, well, I'm interested in new materials, in new building technologies, 
in new uh, digital technologies and so on. Next one, please. And so we started this kind of networking events. Um, that's a typical example how it looks like. This one was at the University of Applied Sciences here in Munich. It was on the topic of acoustics and sound. And uh, it took place about four hours. It's typical. We invite about 50 companies. Um, um, more would not fit into the laboratories. And it starts always with some kind of well, uh, presentation of the professors involved. Uh, they present uh, the knowledge they have in this field of acoustics here, for example. And uh, then there will be some kind of guided tour through the labs. Uh, and afterwards, there's a joint dis a discussion. People will ask, well, I've seen that and this and that. Uh, can, uh, how can I use that? So how can I make a cooperation with you? Is there some funding? Uh, questions like that. Then, and of course, in the end, we have some kind of get together with pretzels and snacks and beer or drinks or whatever you want. And so you can start deepening your contacts. Uh, next one, please. Um, I remember at this evening, we have been in a laboratory where we could see a car so with some measuring uh, devices around. And I asked the professor, well, what can you do with, what are you doing with this uh, laboratory? And he said, well, we are using it for analyzing the sound of the closing doors, so they should sound fine. Um, and we said, well, we don't have much companies which would use cars, but we have companies from the music uh, sector, they produce new music instruments. And here you can see one of them, it's called Schlagzeug by Hepichak. That's a company which has developed new drums, very fine drums. Uh, um, the innovative part is the drum head and the tuning frame. Uh, uh, it's made in a way that you can change it very easily without any tools. So and he was interested uh, to see if this new design would affect the sound in some way or to, uh, to understand why well, his drums better. Well, uh, we started then a preparation uh, between one of these professor uh, and he uh, did analyze the sound. You can see it on the left side, made a lot of calculations. It was a real uh, project. Uh, it was funded by an innovation voucher. That's a funding uh, scheme here uh, used in uh, Bavaria in order to uh, support uh, university help such SMEs. And uh, uh, in the end, uh, uh, Mr. Hefechak got a very fine tuned uh, drum, and uh, I think uh, he could also use his sites for future drum developments. Next one, please. Uh, and as an example, you can see it here, the, um, we had an uh, event it took place at uh, uh, another university, or it was, uh, the, uh, or it was the same thing. Uh, and um, it was on the topic of um, innovative design. Um, what can you do with innovative design? Uh, one of our companies, the boats uh, maker, he produces new kind of uh, speedboats, electric speedboats. And he said, well, can you make me a good looking uh, speedboat? And uh, while they started really uh, design study with a lot of proposals, and you can see one of it here, and it was also a major uh, project. Well, um, uh, next one, please. Uh, well, you, you can see, um, if you are lucky, you will get in contact the right partners. Well, uh, some professor from the university, uh, the right partner from the skilled craft, uh, but you can never be uh, sure of it, of course. So you have a little bit of luck to have. So uh, we said, well, the uh, important thing is that you have to get a partner from science, from at least emerging from science, with an entrepreneurial mind. Some of the professors have it, some don't. So next one, please. Uh, so we thought about, well, we have a lot of startups here in Munich. Next one, please. And these startups uh, uh, um, have qualities like being innovative, they have qualities like uh, um, having a, a good quality, being makers. I think the next one is the waiting, okay, but I'll go on. <laughs> and you will see that. And uh, so uh, if you, uh, you see these qualities, uh, uh, you will see it. The, this, these are the same qualities also our skilled crafts have. They also uh, produce good quality, the regional qualities, sustainable products. And 
uh, think there's still some of the delay, but I think I can go on. And uh, so, um, in fact, uh, I think these qualities fit. And we started um, uh, some, uh, um, um, oh, no, it's going, okay, it's a little complicated, it's animated, that's a problem. So next one, okay. Uh, Okay, so you see the qualities of our startups here. Uh, and now next one, you see the properties of our crafts. Uh, and again, next one, you will see they are really the same and it should blend. Can you see uh, if it will blend? The next one? Oh, it blends. So it, you can make use of uh, really synergies, as you can see, as if it fits. Um, so uh, next one, please. And uh, we are, have started a new kind of uh, a new event uh, in addition to the last one. It's called Start Up with Craft. Next one, please. And uh, we did uh, well start with some kind of pitches, a lot of pitches indeed. We invited about 15 startups, some of them coming from the uh, skilled craft sector, some of them coming from the university sector, research sector, even some professors were invited. And every one of them uh, gave a short introduction. And uh, so um, you uh, could see within a five or three minutes pitch, uh, uh, so-called elevator pitch, what those people were doing, what they have invented. At this evening, the specific topic was edible uh, innovations. Next one. Um, yeah, you can see now what that is, edible innovations, uh, uh, um, something you can eat. Um, in the middle, you see, for example, um, uh, the um, um, uh, and, and 3D printer for chocolates. It was invented by Skill Crafts, and the, on the right hand uh, above, you can see the chocolate. Uh, some other guys uh, had um, well, made uh, new bread, new beer, new noodles, and you could. Uh, and at this part of the evening, we had about 200 people there uh, and the exchange is other. Of course, that's a nice atmosphere and you get in contact. And you, uh, so uh, um, I think we started uh, some kind of preparations, but it's hard to control. Next one, please. If it will, how it will end. So if there are real projects coming out of it or not, some will, we hear it, hear it, might hear it later on. Uh, but uh, sometimes you, you get no information. So uh, we started some special, uh, we started some uh, um, event we call Space Meet Crafts, why space? Uh, because we made it together with a partner from uh, um, the, yeah, the space sector, it's an RCO, that's a um, business incubation center of the ESA, it's located here in nearby in Munich. And uh, there is a part, um, uh, startups coming from the aerospace sector. Next one, please. And so we started some very, very special uh, uh, event with much fewer companies attending, but very special companies. Well, we invited six of these paid up startups, um, companies which have developed or are developing a new uh, uh, products like new aeroplanes, UOV, spacecrafts, uh, satellites, uh, bicycles sometimes. Uh, so, and these companies did uh, present their, um, um, did present their um, uh, ideas within five minutes and talks, very short, bing, 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 and went. And afterwards, uh, uh, pitch six of our crafts, which were crafts of the high-tech craft sector, I really cannot say, uh, companies who are developing prototypes, uh, producing prototypes for new uh, cars, for example, they showed how they could offer solutions, how to, well, to produce prototypes or small series of cars or, and so on. So um, that was the beginning, the first hour. And next slide, please. The next one was uh, then, uh, some kind of speed dating. It was, uh, well, uh, after everybody had a short introduction, uh, each of our uh, startups could talk for about 10 minutes with each uh, uh, of the crafts. So after 10 minutes, it's changed, rotated, well, like real speed dating. I don't know if you ever been in a speed dating. It was my first, to admit. 
uh, so it was very interesting. And you can see we were first a little bit concerned if it would be boring for them, uh, saying, well, uh, we don't love each other, uh, we don't have to talk to each other. Uh, but uh, they, we are very fine inter uh, entertained. The next one, uh, please. Uh, we have made an, um, a feedback study afterwards. Uh, after one month, we ask our companies, well, uh, have you made contacts? Uh, would you do it again? Uh, what have you made recommendations? And um, well, they said, well, it was very entertaining. I've um, made a lot of interesting contacts, but it's still too early after one month to say if there will be some kind of cooperation. So, um, uh, we did uh, this kind of uh, well uh, uh, interview again and asked them again after one year. Uh, next one, please. And uh, it was interesting to see after one year that there were really some uh, corporations now coming out of it. And this is now real innovation. Uh, and we saw, for example, this here Silent Wings, that's an aerospace startup uh, company which produces or develops new uh, UOV. And this is a project where they develop a new uh, UAV, as an unmanned air vehicle, that's the word, uh, which can take off vertical and land vertical. So the special thing is uh, fueled by uh, fuel cell, uh, with hydrogen, uh, so it uh, can be recharged very fast. Um, the part of our skilled craft uh, company is to uh, provide this special wiring system, the electrical wiring needed for this. Um, UAV. So uh, it's still under development. Uh, let's see what happens within a year or two, uh, but it looks good. And we have some more of these projects now coming out of such events. So next, and I think it's the last one. Um, uh, okay, uh, what have we done? I've shown to you we have developed three new networking formats in order to get people in contact with science and partners. The first one we call Crafts Meet Science. Uh, and this uh, one uh, acts as some kind of dome, uh, getting people, crafts, which have never studied, and to read contact uh, with uh, professors. They can now enter these laboratories they have never seen before, and well, think about maybe corporations with these uh, professors, or at least learn something from them about science uh, and uh, technology. The second one uh, is a uh, while well with uh, prof uh, Startups, not professors themselves. These startups may act as some kind of link between the science uh, where they have emerged from and companies. They uh, um, will uh, uh, get in touch, and uh, these are la rather large events with up to 200 people attending. Uh, so it's hard to see what uh, will lead to a, a cooperation or not. Um, uh, this uh, third uh, this, uh, format is much smaller for, let's say, 12 uh, companies. Uh, uh, and uh, so you can control it in a more uh, well, easy way. Uh, it's a speed dating and uh, uh, for less uh, companies attending, but maybe with more specific results. So uh, to sum it up, um, you can't really order or uh, teach it. Uh, it to become innovative, but you can uh, give your companies opportunities to get in contact uh, with science and with people to find partners, and well, maybe you get inspiration and you start a, a corporation. Well, thank you. It's the last one for your attention. Uh, thank you very much uh, for uh, very uh, many interesting examples uh, how, how you deal with networking and uh, kind of creating space for innovations, I would say, because exactly you said that you can't order the innovation, but I think most of what all of us can do is to create some networking space and let people meet and share ideas and hopefully let some new innovative ideas brew. My question uh, would be now directed to you, but maybe Katyushka will want to add something uh, uh, later on. Uh, if uh, you somehow deal directly with academic uh, transfer offices, so when you organize your networking events, we've heard many examples mm -hmm. and like technical details, how, how much time 
you put for pitch and there was uh, mentioned that you connect SMEs and uh, crafts and startups and sometimes some professors, but is there any specific role uh, or specific experience which might be neutral or even negative with academic KTOs? Because I believe all of us still have a lot of work to do to become even more professional, even more able to speak the correct business language to, to connect with SMEs and, and others. Our role is the role of a moderator to get people into contact. And the challenging part is to find the right, maybe fitting partners. So uh, we can invite the right one. Well, we have to have to have context, of course, of universities where we think there might be the right partners. And we need these technology transfer partners at the university, of course. And if you have found the right partners there, then they know which of their professors are really entrepreneurial minded and which might be helpful for, for your skilled uh, crafts. And my part is a, um, the part of our chamber is to find the right uh, crafts which might fit to the professors. But if they will really fit and love each other, you will see that. You can't uh, force them to do it. <laughs> Of course, thank you. And maybe a similar question to Katyushka, how, how do you see it from the other side? Do you actively seek partners like Chamber of Skilled Crafts, which I believe might not be the same in Portugal, but similar entities? I believe the, um, in Portugal, uh, KTOs have a, a path so they need to do, they need to change a bit their focus because they are mainly focused on researchers and the inside um, client, the inside client, and not exactly the, the industry client, the, the, the external client. And that might, might bring uh, this, this uh, that might uh, serve this gap even bigger if they don't look outside and they don't try to find partners, industry partners to connect with. But this, this is also relation, uh, this has a relation with um, the researchers' motivation, as, as Professor v uh, Van Boulou was, was saying. We have um, quite entrepreneurial spirits uh, in higher education institutions, but sometimes we don't um, motivate that 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 spirit because uh, evaluating uh, the, the the research activity uh, it's not exactly they don't they don't count the partnership agreements the the researchers have or the, the effort they do to have partnerships with industry and that's that's an issue we have to tackle that's that's a problem we have to solve. Yeah, I agree. This is a challenge. And uh, there is usually another challenge throughout the whole process, both on the business and academic side. And this is funding. So I will have uh, one general question to, to both of you, and then one directed specifically to Dr. von Bello. Uh, the first general one, and once we got Katyushka online, I will let you answer first. And, then we will switch to Germany again. Uh, do you see uh, the potential lack of public funding supporting like technology transfer? Maybe you mentioned that you don't have any seed funds in Portuguese, Portugal, maybe proof of concept funding. Do you see this as an obstacle to connect with partners outside of the academic institutions? And uh, similar question then to Dr. von Below, how, how does he see it from the uh, business side, if uh, public funding can kind of speed things up or maybe complicate them. So, <laughs> Katushka, please. Mm -hmm. um, we, the feeling we have in Portugal is that public funding, uh, mainly provided uh, through ANI, uh, indeed, and, and other um, intermediaries, um, is uh, financing good collaborative uh, projects, joint projects and promoting joint projects. What we feel, and these actors um, 
tell us is that the, the sustained government financial support, like base funding for their technology transfer and knowledge uh, valorization activities, might, he, might be um, very relevant to, to assure a sustained performance of these teams. So it's, it's, uh, it would be good to have a sustained policy um, regarding funding for, for knowledge valorization activities, yes. Okay, thank you. And as I advertise, similar question to Dr. von Bilo. Do you see uh, that public funding can somehow help? And there was also a question coming from the audience. How exactly are the events like Crafts Meet Science funded? Yep. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, first one, um, can uh, funding programs help? And you have asked the right questions. Will they be helpful or will they make it more complicated? That's this is the question. Uh, so, and that depends on the funding program. And if they are really big one, if you have, uh, you have to apply for funding which takes uh, months and years and you, until you get the money, so then it's more to make it more complicated uh, <laughs> case. But if you have funding programs which you can apply very easily and fast, then uh, it will be helpful. And in most case, cases, even for, uh, especially for small companies, you don't need um, really much money, but you need it fast and simple. Uh, and so we have used for these corporations uh, funding programs called uh, innovation vouchers. Uh, they are up to well, uh, 30,000 uh, uh, euro, uh, what you can get about. And uh, uh, for example, and uh, um, they fund uh, the corporations of universities with these companies. Um, so, uh, well, they might be helpful if they are organized in a good way. But the second question was uh, how this is funded. Uh, in this case uh, uh, of uh, space, uh, Ms. Craft or other um, uh, networking events, we didn't get any funding. Uh, but our organization, that's the organization of uh, skilled craft, has uh, member companies, they pay some money uh, for, for our services. And so they don't have to pay in, in addition to that if they join such a, attend such a um, network. Okay, thank you. So just to quickly cl clarify the answer to the last question, uh, that the all is funded from the membership fees paid by yeah. members of uh, yeah, the association. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, thank you very much. And I might uh, switch directly to another question directed to you. It's more, uh, for like Germany yeah. landscape. Um, I still have an addition. Um, uh, in fact, we have some uh, some special funding grants in Germany, which uh, indirectly help it. Uh, in Germany, we have a funding programs for all of these uh, skill these uh, these chambers of skilled crafts, especially to promote well um, innovations in. Uh, um, companies, say, and they don't uh, directly pay money for the events, but they pay money for people organizing innovative things, like organizing uh, networks of, of skill crafts. Okay, so thank you for the explanation. Yes. And there is a question about Germany landscape or innovative landscape. If you see any ways for uh, let's say, less high-tech SMEs, how, how to draw them into uh, new technologies, innovations with regard to digitalization, and how, how to combine maybe the traditional crafts with uh, completely new technologies, if you found any ways how to merge those, those two things, which often are seen that they are not compatible, but definitely there are ways how new technologies can help very traditional uh, crafts and skills as well. Well, for me, uh, well, um, in fact, um, we have a lot of small SMEs which are growing and when they grow, they will become not only larger, but 
sometimes even more innovative. And they will use digital uh, innovations too. And they might, on the last example I've uh, shown to you, at the space meets crafts, that's a good example how it can work. So when such a company starts becoming innovative, it, the being in cooperation with an aerospace company would not be the first thing. So you have to get some trigger, uh, so it might fit. Uh, and later on, uh, they don't need you anymore uh, if they haven't made these corporations. Uh, uh, so that's one way we, you can promote that. Uh, and of course, you can give them help uh, to get digitalized. Uh, uh, we have a special funding program here in um, Bavaria. It's called Digital uh, uh, bonus or digital ICT voucher, you could call it. And uh, this one really helps directly uh, companies um, uh, using new digital technologies. Uh, funds, um, well, um, the, um, well uh, the, uh, the things they need to uh, servers and things like that. Uh, uh, so, uh, so there are some special uh, funding schemes. Okay, thank you very much. And now another question from Slido towards Katyushka uh, about the Portuguese innovation uh, ecosystem. Uh, if another country would like to copy your system, your strategy, uh, what would you think uh, would be the game changers be the most important uh, factors and uh, I would say key players as well? Katyushka, please. <laughs> <laughs> Tough question, but I would say um, that it's important to, to study um, the ecosystem, to map all the actors that exist and that do not exist but might be necessary to create, and then define clearly uh, the activities or services that each actor should provide um, so that there's the minimum of overlapped activities between actors. And at least that was what we what we did. Uh, we we studied uh, other countries and and learned with other countries too, and tried to to build um, the, this national innovation uh, system uh, with the the, the actors uh, playing a specific role in this system. So I believe that's important. Thank you. And uh, I might add from ASTP perspective as well that these efforts are live at uh, European level or pan-European uh, or international level as well to set up some benchmarks and comparison in between the systems and try to find some uh, triggers and factors which are important. And this leads me to another question directed to you. How do you exactly measure success of uh, like knowledge and technology transfer offices? Uh, because uh, it is very easy to just count the patent applications, the patents granted, but uh, we probably know that it's not just it. There is much more on the top of this. So if you've got any uh, systems in place, how, how to measure success and uh, basically the innovation level. That is a very, very important question. And we are struggling with it permanently because um, our surveys have been um, or asking about uh, patents, of course, but um, also about uh, other in key indicators that might um, measure uh, the success of a, a KTO and um, we have to 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 know that it's a long-term journey so uh, we don't see results immediately if we have a new KTO, KTO it's not expectable to have results immediately um, not even in the IP rights field um, but also another another key indicators I should say has to be more related with relationships, with partnership agreements, with network dimension. How many networks does the the, the researcher participate in, um, or the the, the 
the KT professional participates. Um, of course, we have those those license agreements, number of spin-offs created, number of startups created. But more important, I believe, is the number of jobs created because that's really that really has impact in society and in economy and and. Jobs created are um, really a, a very good measure. So we are trying to figure and learn with Europe and, and the other side of the ocean too, of course, uh, the rest of the world. We are trying to create new indicators to measure their success, of course. Great. Thank you very much. And then... Uh... I've got one question that will be directed to both of you. So maybe I will let you catch your breath, Katishka, and uh, ask the telephone below. You've got any like trainings or toolboxes available for your network? So is there anything uh, specific uh, created for the Chamber of Skilled Crafts? In general, <laughs> something on what level you are using? <laughs> <laughs> for me, <laughs> well, um, um, we don't have a toolbox. Um, uh, uh, I could uh, now um, uh, offer. Normally, we do it the way that we have before such events some training, of course, or you could call it. But that's life. Uh, we make some. Uh, as we have made it before uh, some technical tests. Uh, and what is the interesting part for me was the, uh, with the space meets uh, crafts uh, event. I said, well, will this work? So can our people tell everything they know within five minutes? And what we did use, and that was sufficient, we had a very large clock, this one, this big. So it's like a rocket clock. So and, and we told them before that it's five minutes. It's automatic. It's shut down. We can't do anything. <laughs> so if you're not ready within five minutes, it's gone. And everybody made it with five minutes. And you could see these people, well, are more professional as you have thought before. <laughs> Great. Thank you. This is very nice, Bridge, because we <laughs> almost have, well, exactly, not exactly five minutes. We still have like seven minutes to, to finish. So uh, I will now ask Katushka about training or toolbox, and then I will ask you both for some final statement about what you see as the most important highlight from the discussion and presentations today. So Katushka, please, do you've got any specific Portuguese toolbox or training available which you are using and you would recommend possibly share with the others? Mm, about about training, we've been working um, with uh, a specific public. Uh, there are uh, that is researchers uh, inside uh, higher education institutions with business ideas, and we provide them. Uh, we have a a program to to accelerate their their uh, business ideas and their research into business so transforming research into business um, and that is that is uh, uh, a huge a huge deal um, to, to to bring to, to, to build this bridge and fill in this gap uh, and this value of death, sometimes called, uh, to, to pass from, from idea to business and from research to business. Uh, the two, we are now building some toolkits also, and that would be um, useful to be, in, it will be public to, to, to share with everyone. Uh, in our website, will be uh, will be available for everyone. And about... The final words, or uh, if I might, uh, yeah, say please it. jump into it. <laughs> jump into it. Um, I would, I would um, highlight the importance of this, um, of these teams, uh, these KTO teams, these KTO professionals, knowledge transfer professionals, and their skills. Uh, that is important uh, to to clearly make an investment in these teams so we can see uh, results uh, further on. And also, and this is related with funding, so we need training and we need funding uh, to, to have uh, 
a qualified team, uh, uh, the right number of professionals, and professionals with an industry orientation too. I would, I think that's that would be very, very good to have. Perfect. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you for the presentation and sharing your ideas. And I will now ask the other panelist, Dr. Von Bilo, for his final conclusions of today's discussion. Well, uh, you have to see that um, innovation has two parts which are needed. One part is the science part. And another part is the part of the well, company part, which makes well innovations out of this knowledge. That's the valorization process. So really, we have to stay in contact. We, the well, um, uh, organization of the SMEs with the organizations of well, the, the um, uh, universities of their transfer organizations. Uh, so. Uh, that's very interesting for me, this, this uh, event today. Katyushka uh, is representing one of them. It's not located near Munich. That's a pity, but otherwise we would stay in contact. <laughs> or maybe we come in contact. <laughs> um, there are now uh, some uh, ways to communicate uh, uh, in a digital way, uh, much more than before. Uh, this space, uh, this space uh, meets craft. We did it uh, in the last year in a digital way with um, MS Teams, with breakout sessions and things like that. I couldn't show that now, but uh, that's the way we do it now. Uh. Okay, thank, thank you very much. Uh, I think uh, this is one uh, positive outcome of the current situation that people found out that the world is simply becoming smaller and people can work online and digitally. However, uh, it is probably not the full uh, replacement of personal meeting, but uh, for the time being, we can deal with this. And I think for me, it, uh, technology transfer, connecting academia and businesses, it's all about people, all about personal connections. Uh, so thank you both very much for uh, sharing your views today. Uh, Katyushka said that uh, she sees uh, professional people and training and available funding for this as one of the necessities. I agree, but on my part, I would add also the uh, connectivity uh, because we can't forget uh, being from currently from the academic side of things uh, that uh, there is the partner on the other side that we need to reach out to businesses and maintain the contact. So I think the networking and kind of sharing people, sharing ideas and creating space to do this, uh, this is very important in connecting the dots. If I go back to the title of the session today. So thank you both very much.